the Thoughty or Tea podcast. I, I remember like um when I was when we were learning about eating disorders when I was still really young kid in school, you know you have the the classical stereotypical image of anorexia and and then a a a, a very thin white female that is looks like a skeleton looking in the mirror yeah, and she yeah. sees a really fat person staring back at her. This is like that belief of what anorexia is. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, something that is really, that I notice a lot in, in autism and neurodiversity is that there, there isn't, there isn't body dysmorphia and there is not fear of waking. And that was for me really personally why I never resonated with this label anorexia because I was like, but I don't think I'm fat. I don't want to lose weight. I cannot have this illness, right? Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. that's why I believe the the anorexia, I mean, I even hesitate to call it that. Like the restrictive eating disorder I, is a term I prefer was, was really a manifestation of the autism because for me, mm-hmm. it was like mm-hmm. all of my autistic traits, like the difficulty with change, the need for ritual and routine, the sensory preferences, like the control factor, like the anxiety that I had around food and um, not trusting eating different foods or new foods or more foods because eating full felt really sensory and uncomfortable to me. Like, yeah, I mean that if you don't have any awareness or knowledge of, of autism or autistic traits, like, yeah, I mean, of course, anyone would label that as an eating disorder. And then when it's invalidated and you're not believed and you're accused for mm-hmm. lying and being manipulative, like it just causes you so, to cling to that control even more, which so, of course worsens the disorder. So I suppose like when you when you were mentioning it, like it's it's kind of like inherently assumed that if you have, you know, diagnosed anorexia, that 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 label that you also have body dysmorphia as yeah. well. Yeah. And you're, you're kind of saying that you, you don't need to have body dysmorphia to be anorexic. Like you can see that you're very, very, you know, skinny and you can be like, yeah. okay, right, this isn't actually a problem. I don't see myself as a really fat person in the mirror. I know what I look like mm-hmm. and I don't want to be like this. And you, you kind of like split in the, I, su- I suppose like, you know, even, even in my mind, to be honest, like, you know, to to me, you know, someone who hasn't really sort of delved into like the the eating disorder literature and sort of the world as much as you have, like it does kind of feel like body dysmorphia and anorexia are like one in the same. Mm-hmm. But yeah. whereas you're saying that it's not, it's like oh, not at all. I mean, mm-hmm. I have never had body dysmorphia. I have never considered myself a fat person. And even when I was very, very ill and literally looked like a skeleton, I knew better than anyone else that I looked like mm-hmm. a skeleton. Uh, but then, of course, people are like, but then why didn't you just eat more? Why didn't you change? Well, it's because that was the autistic trait, the difficulty with change that mm-hmm. was almost overpowering this knowledge wow. of how new I how. how how sick I knew I was, right? Like the the idea of changing my ways or changing my habits was more scary to me than than being like, okay, uh, I just look this way and I could die any day, <laughs> right? Like that's how how scary the change was for me, and and I think this is really really common in 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 eating disorders because in the end, like an eating disorder is is an addiction, just like smoking or sex addiction or alcoholism. Like the person suffering from the addiction of, often knows that what they're doing is not good for them like a, a smoker who sees their black lungs like they're not gonna they're not gonna say no like i'm not harming my body like i have no idea what you're <laughs> I talking don't body about to smoke. Right? Yeah, I, right I don't have there. these lungs like right? i'm fine like, <laughs> right exactly like they know um <laughs> they know that what they're doing is not healthy but but changing is is the hardest thing mm-hmm, humans mm-hmm, have to do like mm-hmm. the reason we are called creatures of habit is because we are wired to yeah. to do things over and over again because well, we're, habits, we're designed aren't we because yeah, it's like our, yes our brain's ability to form to form habits is the very thing that allows humans to survive like hmm. if we had to wake up every morning and think about how to turn on the shower how to use the bathroom like all of the energy that we would be using like on an evolutionary level to seek out food and and survive and protect ourselves would be wasted at the beginning of the day it's kind of like bypass bypassing the need to like cognitively process everything that you're doing right like 
that if, you, yes. if, if it's like a habit like that you just after the gym you just go in the shower you don't really think about it you just jump in the shower like exactly. this is what i do whereas right. like you know if you were in that sort of initial stage like you thinking of going to the gym you're like okay i'm gonna go twice a week and do right. this or that and that those like first few weeks it's like the amount of energy and cognitive thought mm-hmm. that goes into doing that is just so intense but if, yeah. if you're in a cycle just every week you go twice a week you don't think about it and and you actually feel a bit weird if you don't go 